Australia's beaches, the best in the world, the ideal combination of sun, surf and sand. Of the thousands who visit Australia's beaches each summer, most are aware of the dangers, the sharks, the rips, the surfboards. To these have been added others which have become particularly noticeable this season, the inexperience of children skin diving. And, even more common, the surf floats of rubber and foam plastic in the hands of children. A beach inspector at Maroubra in Sydney, Mr Mel Kant, talked about the surf floats with an ABC reporter, George Bradford. Mr Kant, why are surf floats dangerous? Surf floats themselves aren't dangerous, it's the manner in which they're used. The riders, children and adults alike, tend to get a false sense of security and, of course, disregard all rules of surfing safety. The main offenders with surfers and surf floats are children. Now, we place this blame upon their parents for not showing enough parental control and keeping their kiddies within the flags and, of course, making sure that their kiddies can swim and can use the surfers. All surfers and surf floats should have handles. This way, if a person does get caught in a rip and falls off, they can at least grab out for the handle to hold themselves up. Have the floats any advantages at all? Yes, my word, they have as a recreational uh, attraction for people who can handle them, of course, and they have been used quite often on beaches such as Maroubra and Bondi for mass rescues, especially where kiddies are concerned. You can take them out and support anything up to seven or eight children until development come out from the patrols. Have you any advice for anyone, say, caught in a rip or with a cramp while on a surfer? Well, with, with any uh, person caught in a rip, they should face their surfo towards the shore and keep a firm grip on their surfo and, if possible, try and raise their hand. The uh, way that they're facing shore, the wave comes, it could possibly uh, wash them in. Have many people been rescued from these various surf floats and things at this beach this year? Yes, approximately 300 people, uh, especially children, it would be 250 out of those with children alone. Over Christmas we were very, very busy and we were lucky that some serious mishaps did not occur. Almost as popular with children these days are the snorkels, masks and flippers with which they can emulate the frogmen of film and fiction. Few bother to learn how to use the equipment properly. One who knows is Chief Petty Officer Bill Fitzgerald, the Chief Instructor of the Navy's Frogmen School in Sydney. Tell me, Chief, how dangerous is this skin diving? Well, I don't consider it dangerous at all if the people that use the equipment have been properly trained in the use of it and carry out the correct safety precautions at all times whilst diving. What are these children doing wrong? Well, they're flapping around on the surface. They haven't got a care in the world. Have a look at them. Making all the splash in the world. Plenty of sound travelling under the water. Sound travels underwater very quickly. And a child on the surface flapping his fins makes a lot of noise and could attract some denizen of the deep, quite possibly, to come and have a look at him. Well, what are these safety precautions? Well, never enter the water on your own. Always swim with a buddy. Keep in visual contact at all times. And if the water's a little murky, keep in contact by a safety line between you. Why is it that experienced divers always work in pairs? Well, experience has shown that one man is vulnerable in the water at all times. If something goes wrong with his equipment, he has only got himself to get himself out of it. Whereas if there's two of us together, using the correct buddy drill, as soon as one is in trouble, you mate up and you've got assistance beside you at all times. What about some advice for youngsters? Well, with the young people, they're always keen to jump into the water and just swim madly all over the place. The main thing to realise when swimming is to always keep a good look out, watch where you're going, don't just keep your head down and snorkel away and swim hundreds and hundreds of yards off the beach or the rocks. Always keep looking up and checking your bearings so that if trouble does come, you can make your way in by the shortest possible route. What about with children using these snorkel tubes? Have you got any advice there? Well, never to dive too deeply on snorkel. Excitement again here if the kiddies see a fish They've got a good breath of air through the snorkel tube, they dive down, they may dive a little bit too deep and over-exercise their eardrums. About 16 feet, 
the uh, average person gets this feeling in the ears. If you don't clear the ear off before you go any deeper, and if you persist in the depth, you could suffer very serious injury. You can run out of air, and during the surfacing procedure, quite possibly become unconscious. What about spears? Well, spear guns should never ever be loaded in the uh, out of the water. Uh, the barb head should always be covered when being transported from home. Never ever load the gun until you're under the water or in the water. And always keep the gun upright when transporting it, even the hand spear, keep it upright.